uh, Mr. Liu Yihai. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to brief the GF-17, the advanced lightweight multi-role fighter. GF-17 is a unique solution. Uh, somehow, I, I would like to say one of the best solutions for achieving the three goals. The first of all is combat effectiveness. It has the advanced platform performance and also the various battlefield situation awareness and with the various lesser weapons and uh, material operations. Meanwhile, it was characteristic by the affordability. It has a low flyaway cost, significantly reduced life cycle cost. And also, it can be customized for the different users. The last one is uh, supportability. It requires very low maintainability. And meanwhile, the transfer of the technology and also the product production can be available. So program was begin from the last 90s. About eight years ago, the first aircraft makes the maiden flight. So all together, we have produced four prototypes. So after that, we carry on the small batch production of the eight aircrafts, and now we are in the first batch of the aircraft co-production with the Pakistan Air Force. Later on, I believe, will be the more blocks and also the batches for this aircraft. <coughs> so up to now, the total flight hours is about 10,000. So GF-17 is a multi-role fighter. The multi-role here, I mean, is it can be the air superiority. It has the capability of the interception and air combat. It with the BVR capabilities, especially for the multi-target scenarios. It also can be attacked to the ground and sea with the price guided munitions and bombs. Besides all this, it also has the rules, can be the rules of the general purpose combat, air patrol, convoy, escort, and the protection recognizes. The aircraft can be operated in all weather, day and night. The aircraft is relatively smaller aircraft. We are using the quite advanced aerodynamic layout. <coughs> the wing with the band and twist, <coughs> we have the relatively large leading edge extension, full span maneuver leading uh, edge flight, and also the differential horizontals, side bump inlet. It also has the very power engine, the high trust, low fuel consumption. The normal takeoff weight of this aircraft is about nine ton. So the aircraft platform was opt uh, optimized for the combination of the maneuverability, the range, the speed, and also the capability of the carrying the weapons. The aircraft has the carefree handling, handling characteristics. It has the auto G load and also angle of, uh, uh, of an attack protection with the many modes of the autopilot. The maximum G can be grade eight and also it's has a characteristic of the short takeoff and landing distance. So compared with the other aircraft, for this 
relatively smaller aircraft, it has a big range. The big uh, basic range is 1,800 kilometers. The maximum one is 3,000. The endurance without air refueling is 3.5 hours. And uh, when we deal with the ROA for air-to-air -air mode, it's something like 1,400 kilometers. And for air-to-ground mode, it's about uh, 1,000 kilometers. Of course, the aircrafts have several advanced airborne systems, like digital fly-by-wire flight control system, digital view gauging system, uh, distributed air data system, etc. Especially, is the mission system. So aircraft has the network-based, high integrated mission systems. With the 1553 bus, the, all the subsystems was interconnected. <coughs> and we have the mutually hot backup mission computers. The all architecture can be let the system more easier to grow and upgrading. Look at this cockpit. It's, I would like to see, one of the modern cockpits in the world in the third generation of the factory. It's nearly glass cockpit. We have the three six by eight inches smart MFD, wide field of view hub, night vision capability, and also the HOTAS 00, zero ejection seat. It can also can be the optional head mounted side or display. Talking about the navigation, it has the advanced laser INS with the GPS hybrid navigation systems. So it's a high precise one embedded GPS and GLONASS. Especially, the ground alignment is very short. So normal compass alignment is only four minutes. The fast one can be 30 seconds. It has the air alignment capability. The accuracy is better than 0.8 note per hour. And also, it has the mass memory digital map, TACOM, instrument landing system, and also the other materials. For optional, it can also have the low altitude navigation pod. Talking about the detection capability, it has the powerful multifunction pulse Doppler radar. Uh, this radar has uh, several modes for air to air, air to ground, and then navigation. I just point out here, it has a uh, dual target tracking. It has a ground uh, mo mobile target identif uh, uh, identification. So this radar can active the air-to-air -air missile guidance, and it's incorporated with the identification with the friend, uh, of the friend and foe. Meanwhile, the laser target pole can be optional. About the communication, the aircraft has the VUHF, digital and anti-jamming voice data communication. It can be normal, secure, and also frequency hopping mode. Can be ground to air and air to air voice data communication. And also this aircraft has an embedded air combat maneuvering instrument. It's more efficient for doing the training. For data link, 
is also can be optional. It has also the self protection and also uh, ECM. The aircraft equipped RWR, it can instantly detect the radar signals, <coughs> auto IFF of detected signals, upload the information to the avionics for warning. It has the, the optical emitter self protection can do in the missile approaching warning, guided the dispensary of the flyers and the chaff. It can also have the self-protection jammer, can do in the active count measures. So that's the weapons and the stores. The aircraft have the seven store stations. Maximum load is greater than four kilograms. Among the seven stations, three of them can carry more than one ton. So this is the list of the uh, weapons, but not only. Later on, we will add more. About the maintainability, during the design, we are located reasonable locations of the maintenance point for effectively reduce turn around cycle. We also are using the universal and the standard maintenance interface and for better interoperability uh, of the airfield equipment. For all the airborne systems, it has an embedded built-in test capability to isolate the failure, failure to IRU. And also, it has the high accessibility for quick release. The last, that we can also customize as per user requirement. Due to the aircraft platform and also the system structure architectures, when we are designing it, we are thinking about the upgrade and also to adapt for the other users' requirements. So it's much more easier to do than others. So for all other uh, alternate options as per user requirements can be done. So that's my last slide. After my briefing, we are, you can know, we are anticipating cooperation with you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.